Sup, chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is nova and you're all having a preem week. As for me, it's late right now. I have liquid minoxidil in my hair, so my hair looks really greasy and diffuse. So visually, I'm a terrible representative for the hair loss movement at the moment, so I apologize for that. But the reason why I'm making this video today is for some reason, over the past month or so, I've been getting nonstop questions from people in virtually every video I've been making about splitting finasteride tablets. So cutting finasteride into smaller pieces to titrate the dose is a very common practice, not just with finasteride, but with all medications. It is something I do myself, in fact, since I use generic Proscar, which is a 5 milligram tablet of finasteride, as opposed to Propecia, which is just a 1 milligram tablet. So, I cut my Proscar tablet into quarters, so I get roughly a 1.25 milligram dose every day, and I've been doing this for over 10 years now with no issues whatsoever. The reason I take my finasteride this way is because generic Proscar, and my pharmacy at least, is extremely cheap. So even though uh, prices do fluctuate occasionally, I can usually get 30 Proscar tablets for around 10 to 20 US dollars, and when quartered, that means one refill will last me four months, which isn't a bad deal at all when we're talking about a frontline treatment against the slaphead curse. People will also split their Propecia 1 milligram tablets to take doses under 1 milligrams as a means of reducing side effects, and we'll get into that a bit later, but that's usually something a doctor will recommend to their patients if their patient does not respond well to 1 milligram. However, many people seem to be very worried that the act of splitting the tablet will somehow hurt finasteride's efficacy against hair loss by negatively affecting how the body absorbs the drug. So, I don't know where this idea came from, but I get asked about it enough that I feel that I need to address this before it gets out of control, and we have yet another theory that explains everything. So I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I'm going to flat out tell you right now that splitting finasteride will absolutely not hurt the efficacy of the drug whatsoever. Keep in mind that even though finasteride was first approved by the FDA in 1992, back then it was only approved for the treatment of an enlarged prostate. It wasn't approved for the treatment of androgenic alopecia until five years later in 1997. Despite this, Researchers had already known long before finasteride hit the market that it was still beneficial for hair growth due to the research done as far back as 1974 that showed that androgenic alopecia could be prevented by blocking the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. In other words, it has been known for a long time that the same enzyme that caused an enlarged prostate also caused hair loss. In the first studies looking at the effects of finasteride dosing on prostate enlargement, it was found that finasteride at 5 milligrams per day was slightly more effective than one milligram per day in preventing symptoms of enlarged prostate, even though you can see in this top panel of this figure here that they both suppress serum DHT to the same extent. However, in the first studies of finasteride for hair loss, it was found that 5 milligrams per day and 1 milligram per day gave nearly the same improvements in hair counts. Because of this, 1 milligram per day was selected as the dose for treating androgenic alopecia, and it remains the standard dose to this very day. But before the 1 milligram dose was approved as Propecia back in 1997, it was still common practice for doctors to prescribe finasteride at 1 milligram per day for hair loss off-label, and doctors would frequently instruct their patients to quarter it back then since 5 milligrams was known not to be necessary for the treatment of hair loss. So quartering finasteride is not some new practice. It has been around for a while, and in the 31 years that finasteride has been on the market, there hasn't even been one single case report of someone losing ground as a consequence of splitting their finasteride tablets. I found that the most common misconception people have about splitting finasteride tablets is that it destroys the coating of the drug, and the coating is important because it helps the drug absorb properly. This is just a myth, though. The coating has absolutely nothing at all to do with how finasteride is absorbed by the body. The reason that finasteride has a film coating is because finasteride is a drug that absorbs through the skin, which unfortunately is also the reason that topical finasteride solutions go systemic and cause the same side effects as oral finasteride, which makes topical finasteride redundant in most cases. But because finasteride is absorbed through the skin, this puts certain people at risk if they handle the drug. The people specifically at risk are pregnant women since finasteride can cause birth defects. In fact, it clearly states in the Proscar package insert that women who are or who can become pregnant should not handle crushed or broken finasteride tablets because of the risk to male fetuses. The film coating is there to protect women from this risk. In fact, Crushed finasteride is given all the time in hospitals to patients through feeding tubes since they often have difficulty swallowing. In this list from the British National Health Services of medicines that can be crushed for administration through feeding tubes, finasteride is on the list of medicines that can be crushed. Once again, there is a warning for people handling the drug to wear gloves since the drug is absorbed through the skin and to not let pregnant or potentially pregnant women handle the drug. So. 
There's no doubt that finasteride tablets can be split or even crushed and still be very effective, otherwise they would never be administered this way. The thin film coating doesn't affect the absorption of finasteride, and even if it did, it wouldn't matter because peak absorption of finasteride happens very, very quickly. Only six to eight hours, in fact. Any coating on the tablet would only delay the absorption of the drug by a matter of seconds before our own stomach acid dissolved it, and that would not do anything to affect the drug's efficacy in any way whatsoever. Another common myth I hear about cutting finasteride is that the exposure to air as a consequence of breaking the coating around the drug will denature the drug or somehow deactivate it. I found absolutely no evidence that air can deactivate finasteride. One thing to keep in mind though is that direct sunlight can deactivate finasteride. In this study here, 90 hours of simulated direct sunlight was applied to the powdered form of different drugs including finasteride. Under these extreme conditions, finasteride can lose half its potency in 100 hours which is a little more than four days. However, when testing finasteride in its pill form or inside its packaging, there is only very minimal degradation from direct sunlight. So the only thing to keep in mind from this is to keep the cut tablets away from direct sunlight. So long as you keep the drug in the pill bottle or package blister, there should be no degradation of your finasteride. So you would think that would be it as far as all the bullshit that is out there about cutting finasteride tablets, but it turns out there is yet another common myth that I hear get frequently brought up, and that is the myth that a tablet cannot be split because then you'll have random concentrations of the Proscar tablet, such as one quarter tablet containing two milligrams of finasteride and the other containing just 0.1 milligrams of finasteride since the drug is distributed unevenly. Yet again, this is completely false because the way finasteride is manufactured is that it is mixed with other inactive filler ingredients in the tablet and you can read more about the manufacturing process and the ingredients in the tablet in the drug patent which I'll link below. But to summarize the process, the finasteride tablets are not individually manufactured. They all start off as kind of a paste-like material that is then divided into pills when they are manufactured in factories, so therefore the pills have to have an even concentration of the drug, otherwise the pills would all have random doses of the active ingredient. So there's no reason to think that somehow the finasteride is not evenly distributed throughout the entire tablet. This is just yet another myth that was made up one day by the hair loss forums and subreddits. Lastly, I want to really stress here that people should not be getting obsessed about getting a perfect cut when they cut their finasteride tablets. Finasteride is not a very dose dependent drug. So if you split a one milligram tablet into 0.5 milligrams, you're only get going to get a very negligible difference in DHT suppression. In the original studies on finasteride, there was only a minimal difference in DHT suppression between one milligram per day and 0.2 milligrams per day. One milligram per day suppressed serum DHT by 68% and 0.2 milligrams per day suppressed it by 61%. So barely any difference at all. And as far as effectiveness against hair loss goes, 0.2 milligrams per day was almost as effective as one milligram per day as you can see here. So if you cut one milligram into quarters, maybe one day you will take 0.2 milligrams and the next day you'll take 0.3 milligrams, but it's not going to make any difference because you will still be getting virtually the same amount of DHT suppression. It's even less important if you're splitting a five milligram Proscar tablet. If one day you take 1.25 milligrams and the next day it's zero, it's one milligram or 1.10 milligrams, it won't matter in the slightest. Remember, if you quarter a five milligram tablet and take it over four days, you're still getting five milligrams of finasteride every four days no matter how you cut the tablets. And being that a quartered piece is 1.25 milligrams of finasteride, even if you have a slightly uneven cut of the Proscar tablet, you're still going to be getting at least one milligram of finasteride, which is the dose where finasteride hits its peak, hits its peak DHT suppression. And anything beyond that is going to be redundant. And if you want to know more about that particular topic, I do discuss how to optimize your finasteride dosing in a video which I'll link below. The bottom line though here, Chooms, is that there there is no reason not to split finasteride tablets unless you think it is just a hassle. In that case, you can just use Propecia, which comes as a standard one milligram tablet that you can just take and not have to worry about cutting. Splitting finasteride tablets absolutely works. It doesn't do any harm to the effectiveness of the drug, and it can potentially save you some money as well. It also allows people who are not good responders to the standard one milligram dose of finasteride to titrate the dose down to as low as 0.1 milligrams every day, which is the smallest dose of finasteride that can still be effective. And again, I talk about all that in my optimal dose of finasteride video, which is linked below. So again, I don't know who is responsible for spreading this false idea about why we shouldn't cut our finasteride tablets, <coughs> trustless, but it's all complete bullshit, and I hope this video did an adequate job of explaining this so we can put this false theory to rest and move on to some more serious research. Speaking of which, I got some preem content coming very soon, so I'll be back with y'all shortly. Thank you for watching, Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.